My name, they call me Jesse James. My name is El Presidente. El Presidente. Yeah, and I was involved in a lot of gang affiliations growing up, I'd done a lot of prison. It was hard for us growing up, you know? Um, we had it tough. When you got cold, my family, we used to sit around the candle. And when it got really cold, we used to light it. Hi folks, this is your boy Vlogger Super. This is yet another vlog. As the temperatures fell to minus two last night in London, I'm going to check what the homeless people are like now and if they cope with the temperatures. There is a wee song before we go. There was a boy who was sincero. They called him from the super. Hey, and that boy was sincero. Uh, he lie on the palma. Hey, yeah. Vlog at the super. Vlog at the super. There was a boy who was sincero. There was a boy who was sincero. Let's go see what these homeless folks are up to. Vlog at Zupa. Vlog at Zupa. There was a boy who was sincero. There was a boy who was sincero. According to statistics, there's roughly 650 people sleeping rough on the streets of London on the average day. Every one in 50 people in London is homeless. This is the official statistics. Some sources say that the number could be as much as 13 times bigger than this. 50% of all the rough sleepers in London are UK nationals. I've seen actually a lot of my folks, uh, Polish people on the streets of London as well, I must admit. The thing is in London the climate is not as severe and it's very easy to become a homeless because uh, you can probably manage easily live throughout the year the temperatures really rarely fell below two. So let's meet Archie and El Presidento. Follow me. My name, they call me Jesse James. My name is El Presidente. El Presidente. Yeah, and I was involved in a lot of gang affiliations growing up. I'd done a lot of prison. And I'm a nurse by trade. I looked after my mother and she died. I was made voluntary homeless. And I ended up in Croydon. I don't know why. I just ended up in Croydon. It was God's will to me. And since being here, I've been trying to help the guys, mainly the guys, to see sense in their lives and try to lead by example and show them that they don't have to be addicted to drugs and the rest of it. They can change. They can go to college. They can get, you know, some qualifications. They can do something with their lives. I'm here willingly trying. I'm homeless willingly. I've been in hostels and I've been kicked out two hostels. One because I got assaulted and my top teeth got smashed out. And the second one because one of my ex-girlfriends works there as a social worker. So they, they kicked me out of the places. So I'm back into this tunnel where I've been for a few years now. But normally I set it up so Christmas is and everything. This is your usual yeah, usual spot. Yeah, I like to be here this too. This is your home for last Yes, time. for the last few years. And I'm trying to make it comfortable for anybody who needs the help, anybody that I can help. I'm trying to do the best I can, God's will. I'm a Muslim brother and I wish to pay back for some of the bad things I've done. But I'm not a bad person anymore. I'm a good person, I believe. <laughs> Can you do that? <laughs> here we go, we are here with Archie, who's been on streets, on, on this street for the last 36 months. 38. 38 months. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah, yeah. But between here and probably another postcode, but backwards and forwards, this side, that side, we get moved around by security, police, this, that and the other. We pushed around. You're not cold, guys. Uh, well... We, like, when we're not arguing, we cuddle, <laughs> and, and that makes us warm. So where, where are you from, Archie? Um, born and bred in Croydon. Can you tell me your story, how you ended up on streets? So, um, do you want a long version or a short version? 
the true version. <laughs> the true version. Okay, yeah, so, so basically, um, so me and my wife, um, so we was, I was working self-employed, and um, I was working self-employed, and you know when people say, like, they live, like, sort of paycheck to paycheck, but when I was working self-employed, like, cash was different, what but... What did you do? Um, builder, like, like, builder, roofer, slater, tiler, carpenter, like, all round in the building trade, all rounder. And um, so we was making it. We wasn't living, we wasn't living, we wasn't living above our means, was we? We wasn't living above our means, but we made it each month. And so when the COVID came, we, the work stopped and we didn't, we didn't make rent. We didn't make rent. And then so we was renting a flat and then once we didn't make rent, the uh, guy that we was renting from, an Indian guy, he just came and just and just threw us out. We sit, we learnt after that he was subletting the flat to us. Um, so, I mean, maybe he was getting it from the council or something. And he just come with his family and threw us out. We didn't know what was entitled to. We didn't know. We didn't know what was going on. We just got turfed out. And so we was out. We, since after that, then we learnt that we had rights and this, that and the other. But um, like I say, we was, being, we was subletting. It was an illegal let. All the time we was making rent, there was no problem. So we just went belly up from there. And I'm trying my best to just, you know, to uplift some people that need to be uplifted because they don't see what the beauty you? in themselves. You, you should be uplifted in the... In of the course, the of course, but my, my main aim right now is focusing on others. But everybody says I should be focusing on myself. I find it hard, my brother. I find it very hard because it's God's will to me. Everything is God's will. And I do everything for God. I don't do nothing for myself or for anybody. I do it all for God's will. And I'm trying, my brother. I'm trying my best, but I'm not getting no help from the, the, the council. Nobody's helping me, really. No. I've been out here. I've got, I've got illnesses. I've got ailments, and I'm still out here struggling to uplift guys that need uplifting, that need help and need direction. They've had no father figures. I'm not a great father, but I'm trying to be a father to a lot of guys out here, big guys, 35, 40-year-old guys. So you're not actually a father yourself? Yes, I'm a father. I've got children, but I've never been a father. Oh, I'm not, I've never played that part. I've never been worthy, and I should have been. So now I'm just trying to do something positive to uplift the guys around here that I believe are worthy and, and, and are worthy of my time. And I'm trying to do some godly things. And I'm struggling at times, but I'm doing my best. Is Croydon the most dangerous part of London? No. West, this way is the most dangerous point. West Croydon, West Croydon is the most dangerous point. The West Croydon, London Road is the front line of all the action. I'll take my camera down there later on. See what's yeah, well, don't let anyone see your camera down there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For real. I mean that. It's, it's yeah, like that, yeah. British. You hate British? Yeah. I'm British, I hate British. British are a lazy country. You know what's wrong? We have a nil, we have a nil, but no, we don't, don't want to work. That's right, That's, my wife is right. It was hard for us growing up, you know? Um, we had it tough. When you got cold, my family, we used to sit around the candle and when it got really cold, we used to light it. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. Like, like, <laughs> uh, I'm a nurse by trade, auxiliary nurse by trade. I work with British Nursing Association, I'm mentally and physically handicapped, but like I say, I've done a lot of wrong in my life. I've been a bit of a criminal and I've done a lot of prison, a lot of prison. No. I choose not to go back to prison. I choose to try and stay out of prison. I'm trying to do now is to re-get the tunnel back to how it was before, where at least like for before? Christmas, well, we had beds down here, we was feeding people, we had people that was coming and actually giving us donations. Left. I left. I was put into a hostel and uh, I was 
chucked out of that hostel because one of my ex-girlfriends, as I said, works there, which is, to me, it's, it's a joke. And since then, I've been back down the tunnel. But because it's cold and it's Christmas, I'm trying to make it so anybody can come and they've got somewhere, if they're stuck, to stay where it's warm, where they can get some food and get some help. And mainly, they can talk and be listened to. Because, you know, that's the main thing, what's not going on. Nobody's listening to anybody out here. They're just ignoring them. No one's got no time for nobody. And it's not right, my friend. We're human beings. And if you don't get it, nothing's more important than each other. And we have to help each other. It's, we're not getting help out here. You know? right. that was, how, how long ago was that? That was around 38. Yeah, 38, 39 months ago now. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's three years on streets. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, sure, yeah. So and since then we've been to Croydon Council, we've been to Crisis, we've been to many uh, outreach, the teams and all that, yeah, to, to, get, to get help and all that. But they don't want to house us together. We are, like, without an ID certificate, we are husband and wife. And... Um, but but um, but they don't want to put us together. They want to put us in a hostel. They offer like me, my wife, uh, a, like a woman's hostel somewhere, and me like a male hostel in a, in a different postcode, different postcodes and all that. With no visiting rights. But but like we, like I say, without an ID certificate, we're husband and wife. We don't have drug issues or or any other issues. Like we we grandparents, <laughs> sake yeah. And so um. Don't look like. A well, Run for thank it's you. on streets. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, no, our, 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 our kids don't know like the situation that we're in, and we keep it a secret. And um, you keep it secret from who? Oh, from my children. How is it to be actually living on streets during that cold winter? <clears throat> I'll be honest with you, <clears throat> and I'm not going to be like if I was on my own. I don't think I would have made it. It's the fact that I have a wife is the only reason I've made it. Because when it gets tough. Behind every man there's a woman or what they say. Yeah? <laughs> this council's not doing nothing for anybody out here. There's a lot of homeless people out here struggling. They're not doing nothing for them. Nobody does nothing. They say they do, but they don't. There's a lot of empty buildings around here. You give me one empty building, I'm using a tunnel, for, ex for example, but you give me one empty building and I can fill that with homeless. And I, I, I've had it where I've fed people down here. I've had the help. Everybody's tried to help me. And due to going in to a hostel, I had to give it up. Oh, you know, my brother, I've only lived in Croydon on the streets. And it's, it's not good. It's very bad. It's, uh, it's cold, it's, you get no help, it's, it's hygiene, it's bad, you get no hygiene. So you have to go and use the, the bathrooms and they chuck you out. You get no help, my brother, it's very hard for anybody. There's no help whatsoever from the government? Well, you know, they say they help and I suppose they do help some people, but they're not helping me. Before I had a big dog, I lost my dog. He was my uh, anxiety dog. Stopped me from getting depressed, kept me a reason to get up every day. And I lost him, someone stole him, and now I, have, I don't have my dog, and now I'm on my own again. But in God's will, I will achieve something. If I can just help one person, one, just one, I'm happy. For God I do this, because I believe I'm doing the right thing. And nobody's telling me I'm doing the wrong thing. Everybody what says I'm doing the right thing. What is thing. the right thing? You mean the right, no, the people. right thing is helping people. We're human beings. And what they don't teach, what they should have been teaching from day one in school, is to no, do not deny somebody your beautiful words. The biggest sin. Not stealing and the rest of the rubbish. To deny someone your words. Because if you deny a person your words, there's no door opening. There's no forward progress. There's nothing. So, I deny nobody my words. I have my ears to listen to anybody's problems. From, uh, what do you think about Brexit? Um, you know what? I don't know. Sometimes it can be a good thing, but then it can be a bad thing. Brexit is the very least of our problems right now. So we don't think about it. 
What's your or uh, your your problems? Yeah. But just yeah, I know you can't. Ri can you rise above and see how is the 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 country coping? Is that is <laughs> this country? This country has destroyed itself. The country is self-destruct. Well, right, right. the, the country doesn't. There's no yeah. Like nothing my wife said, there's nothing great in Britain anymore, and this country has destroyed itself. The country doesn't look after its own. The country only looks after other countries. Doesn't look after the people in its own country. And that's not a racial comment. Believe me, it's not. Yeah, because we're have, we're all we're all for help. We're all for help. 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 You know. Of course, you know. Britain used to be better than. Britain was great. So I've been in, like in the building trade my whole life. So um, uh, a lot of um, English guys say that um, oh the Polish stole the building trade. They didn't steal it. They didn't steal it. English guys gave it to them because uh, English English guy English guy will turn up late for work and he'll go home early and he will moan, complain about the work all day long. Like when the Polish came to work on the building right, trade years ago, okay, they are the first ones to turn up, they're the last ones to leave, they never complain. So if you're an employer, who are you going to employ? And I want to help anybody who I can help. I'm trained. And there's a lot of people out here who need help and they're not getting the right help from this government. And they need to stop putting their finger out. They say they spent all the money, it's lies. They got the money. They just don't want to spend it on the homeless. They don't want to deal with the homeless issue out here. It, that is how it looks to me. And I've been out here for four years now. No, I'm good, my brother. Thank you very much. We don't eat second-hand food, brother. We eat proper food, but it was bought for us, brother. You see? Insults. You're giving a man second-hand food. That's an insult to me. Because I wouldn't give some of my cast-offs. Yeah? I wouldn't do that, brother. <laughs> I will give, I will buy food for someone and give them their food. Do you understand me, my brother? That's what I do. And these ladies will tell you, I do good, I do my best, and that's all I ask to do. All right, my darling, God bless you, my baby. That's all I can do, my brother. Please subscribe to Zopa and listen to what's being said. It's very important, and people need help. Start to be human beings again and not, not computers and machines. Start to take notice and help people out, please. I beg of you, in God's name. God bless you. Please subscribe to Zupa. It's very good. Yucky mash. How much is this mic worth? Sorry? How much is this mic worth? <laughs> it's not, it's not. I hope you are well and healthy and I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year if I want you by then. Because you know, a family. I've got family, so I've got things to do, but I will get back to you by then. I'm sure I will. I love vlogging. I love vlogging too much not to do it. Thanks for watching. Till next time, your boy, Vlogger Zupa. Brr.